thank you very much for coming today. <laughs> um, when I was the uh, Vice President of Academic Affairs at the Nebraska Indian Community College a few years ago, I had the distinct honor and pleasure of meeting Jerome Kilsmall and his lovely wife Nancy, who is here today. Jerome is an Oglala Lakota from Porcupine, South Dakota. And at the Tribal College, he was an adjunct faculty member teaching Native American studies. And he con continues to teach uh, at the Tribal College, but he's also on the faculty of the University of South Dakota, where he received his master's degree in selected studies. At the University of South Dakota, he teaches Lakota language and history, Suan tribal culture, and American Indian thought. <coughs> Jerome is also an accomplished actor. He is a member of the Great Plains Chautauqua Society, which is headquartered in Bismarck, North Dakota. And every summer, he travels with the Chautauqua and performs. His two uh, prominent uh, portrayals in the Chautauqua is uh, Dr. Charles Alexander Eastman, who was the first uh, physician, uh, Dakota physician, uh, medical doctor in the United States. He also portrays uh, Tecumseh, the Shawnee chief, who was also a British general. So please give a warm welcome to Jerome Kilsmore. Thank you very much. I decided today to wear the regalia of Tecumseh. Although the British general red coat is absent, and my chook, the red French cap, is absent, the rest is how he dressed in the late 1700s and early 1800s. He was strongly dedicated to the alliance of all nations, and that's the tribal nations. He brought 51 tribes together. Try to do that now with all of own capabilities. It's very hard to do. And, but he was an awesome man. And so I always try to uh, portray him the best I can. I am using a peace medal that was given to his grandfather. Uh, this is a replica of the 1801 medal. His was actually King George the Third medal, and so uh, I just turned it the other side so you could see the uh, handshakes on the medal. But he used the uh, medal when he spoke in public, hoping that the peace that the government was always talking about would one day come true. The peace medal was actually given to his grandfather but he wore it for him. At the Battle of the Thames, he did not wear any British general's coat, or he didn't wear a peace medal. He only wore buckskin and a buckskin shirt. And so uh, somebody who had dressed that way had been killed, and uh, he didn't dress like a general then. Uh, but uh, he did lose his life at the Battle of the Thames. He was a strong warrior. Today I want to tell you about the engagements that we have had as Americans, and including Native Americans. The engagements we had initially against the government with battles against the cavalry, that's the Battle of the Little Big Horn, uh, the Battle of Wounded Knee, many of the battles that took place after that in the courtrooms, things, things have changed, times have changed, treaties became acts. And so every one of those engagements 
Lakota had songs for them. If you look in your hymn books, you would sometimes read that the song was made in 1789, but still sung today. We do the same thing, but we keep it through oral tradition. We don't write many of our songs down, so we have to pass it on to the next singers. So to become a singer and save these songs is an awesome task. You have to have remembered many, many songs for each appropriate activity, such as honoring, the wiping of tears, welcoming soldiers home, and all of that that concerns our love for our warriors. There are relatives. There are from our families. My grandma said when they came home, they had comeback boots on. I said, Grandma's comeback boots. She said, No, it's comeback because they came back in those boots. And so I just had to give her that one. <laughs> we tend to give everything to the elders all the time. And, uh, but I'm going to sing a flag song to open my presentation of singing. And those of you who can, please stand up. This is our Lakota National Anthem. Nancha means 
a respected leader or an elder. And so if he kept the wisdom of the people, then we always go to them to ask what to do or what to say. That was important to us. So we have a song for the sheets or nashat. And we always honor the elders. And including the women. We are a matriarchal society. One of our sacred rights, the seven, of the seven, one is to the women. One of our sacred rights is the women coming of age to welcome them into the adult life and to that time when we have to give information and take information and start increasing that knowledge. So we come to that time for the women also. But the men, we have a song for them as we have song for the women too. The chief song usually of the Uglala Lakota, we always place red clouds named there.
sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. And I'm happy when it does. Uh, pre uh, pre service time uh, for the Lakota, we were always warriors. Uh, we had a strong warrior ethic, Zuyavichasha, meaning the protectors of the land. Zuyavichasha, the patrolmen, to see where the berries were and the cherries, where the buffalo were. That's a Zuyavichasha. Sometimes they become Akichita to protect the children and the old people. And so we have then had contact with those who thought the same way. They thought that they would have the enjoyment of the land also, like we did. And so, through those times when we had gatherings to have ceremonies, one time there was the greatest ceremony again. Like every year, we have a ceremony called a Sundance. And sometimes we come together with many tribes. And a man by the name of Yellow Hair, Custer, General Custer, arrived at one of those gatherings. And you know the rest of the story. In history, we kept the song. The song you hear, when I translate it, it's a lot different from what you hear with country and western songs about war. The song goes, Uh, 
uh, if I hum a song to somebody and if they know it, they need to go like this. Let's do that. To your heart. Okay. And to your heart. It means I understand. So that whoever's humming it knows it doesn't have to hum it all the way through. <laughs> I don't really understand. Okay. <laughs> In the evening, the sky is red. It's going to be clear tomorrow. It's going to be good weather to go to battle over there. Somebody mistranslated that and said it's a good day to die. I don't think he said that. He said the sky is red. Tomorrow is going to be clear. I just needed to uh, say that I edit a lot of the things that are mistranslated. And it sounds negative when you say it the other way. Uh, when I sing the uh, Battle of the Little Bighorn song, Kola Tokile, means my friend, why this? My friend, why this? Kola, they're crying up there. Up north, there's a battle, and the people are crying. My friend, why this? My friend, why this? That's what the song says. It didn't say who was crying. Perhaps the enemy was crying, and our people were crying too. We have empathy for anybody who is hurt. We have empathy for battles that hardship that we have to live. And so, like I said, if you hear a country western song, it's more overt and very terrible. Our language is intimate. Intimate in a sense that we are courteous even to our enemy. Tecumse was happy. He was very courteous. He was one person that scolded the British generals for trying to torture American prisoners. The Shawnee, we don't do that, he said. He scolded General Brock, General Proctor, who was British generals. He scolded them for trying to torture prisoners. That's why he was probably famous, is because he was fair, he was understanding. One time I spoke to a lot uh, such as this. And the next day I went back for a workshop. A little grandma came up to me and she said, I never heard of Tecumseh in all my life. But this morning when I was mowing my lawn, I noticed that my <laughs> lawnmower had Tecumseh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have to hear something before you register. I think we're all like that as writers. Yeah, that's why I say get a thesis statement, right? <laughs> so you get all the materials that can add to it. Uh, I'd like to uh, sing a song for a wonderful man. Uh, I have a very Catholic mind also. <laughs> so I always say that Chief Bigfoot, who lost his life at the Battle of the Little Bighorn, was probably a martyr. He died for his spirituality. Excuse me. My wife always corrects me because I pronounce words wrong. <laughs> wounded knee. Oh, wounded knee, excuse me. Yes, wounded knee. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm scanning here and scanning back at you is probably why. Uh, I'm not used to reading books, I usually go right on through. Uh, but today I wanted to do things in line and in order so I could be able to save them for me, too. And, uh, but at Wounded Knee, they sang a song for him after the fact. We always make songs in honor of people who are great. And Chief Bigfoot has a song. 
it came on very strongly to the people again. The people took it back, we say. Sometimes they only sing it in ceremonial times. But when the people take the song back, that means all other singers at powwows, at gatherings, they can sing that song because the people took it back, we said. I don't know where the line is where the, the people took it back. But I think with this example, I think it's the best. In 1990, I and my wife went to Wounded Knee, the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Wounded Knee. I and my, my wife were there. And when we left, I had a little old raggedy Ford. And we took off in that car. We didn't have a heater, but the wind was blowing enough so that it kept the front window all clear. And a little bit of right here so I could look to the side. The rest was all frosted. But we had our panel tents. And we had extra socks on. And our gloves. And we went from vermilion to wounded knee. It was very cold. It was a blizzard then. Just the same as it was a blizzard back then in 1890. December 29th. And we were on our way, same day, everything, the same. We were having our difficulties also. At the same time, the riders started from where Sitting Bull was killed. They're riding their horses to reenact the Wounded Knee Ride. They had many, many horseback riders riding through those fields, pastors all the way to Wounded Knee to reenact that Bigfoot ride. We got there at the same time as the riders. And we were able to go to the talks that they had at Manderson Gymnasium. I had my camcorder and taking everything. This song was sung at the memorial of Chief Bigfoot, Wachipi or Pawa at the Kyle Gymnasium, about 40 miles away from Wounded Knee. And we started to hear this song more and more. As there were new little rides to remember those old days when it was a hard time. Now the little kids, the children were starting to make rides. And I think they were doing that for their identity. They were doing that to remember who they were, to remember their ancestors. These were descendants. They wanted to see how grandma and grandpa may have felt. That's one of the things that we really push is to reenact things all the time, reenact so we could see how it was. The song goes like this.
בלי היט היא הפור. חסי תחם קרקעון, תחי הגלי יום כהלוך. The man by the name of Bigfoot came back and lied down in a difficult way. Hitchakiniki heya kea fellow. Those who lived and survived that told about that, is what the song says. It didn't say anything about a battle. It only said that he came back and lied down in a difficult way. If you see the pictures of wounded me, you'll see him lying, resting in a very difficult way in the snow. So once again, this language is courteous to the children. When I was a small boy, my grandmother and grandfather who raised me were in their 90s. And I was a little boy. If they're in their 90s in 1940, early 1950, that means they must have been born in the mid-1800s. But they didn't tell me about any wars. They didn't tell me about any wounded knee or little bighorn. They didn't tell me that. They were kindly and they were quiet. And in the mornings when they got up, they put cedar on the stove so I could smell that. And it was comforting. My grandmother would tiptoe up and say, my grandson, are you awake now? And in those days, when you're loved, you can sleep any way you want to. Halfway's off the bed. <laughs> Just any kind of way. If you study a cat, they know the art of relaxation. <laughs> I know how they feel. Oh, any kind of ways. And if I didn't want to get up, I would go like this. And she would tiptoe away, and then later come back. She said, My grandson, are you awake? And I would go like this. And then the skillet would go on the stove. The wood would go in, more wood. Bacon would be frying. Eggs. Oh, all those things that taste good. The skillet, the, the little door would open and the biscuits would come out. She would make bounce up and down. Wow, oh, it tasted good. Uh, one thing the government made that I really loved was cheddar cheese. <laughs> That's the best thing the government ever made. Uh, when my friends go home from Vermilion and they come back from the reservation, I say, did you get some? <laughs> they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, one of the best things the government ever made. Uh, try it if you could find some. Okay. Uh, then, uh, after all this hardship, our boys, we call them boys, even if they're 90 years old, they're still boys in our songs. Our boys went to war. The first one was World War I. Back then it was still the Great War, because World War II didn't happen yet. Say the Great War. 10,000 Native Americans joined up. They didn't have to be drafted. Remember, these guys are warriors. They left. 10,000. 1919, it was over with. Happiness. They came back. They came back. And 1924, we became citizens in our own land. In 1924, we had become citizens of the United States. Thanks to those warriors that served for us to live. Even to this day, we still really honor our warriors. The World War II song, World War I song, excuse me, World War I song, one of them would go like this, there are many, one would go like this. <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. 
words, uh, those it's small phrases again, little short phrases they can learn. Akichita eya ahue, eya ahue lo. Some soldiers are coming, some soldiers are coming. Akichita eya ahue, eya ahue lo. They're coming, they're coming this way. Akichita akisha wachipo. You soldiers, dance, throw in your voice in happiness. So they're coming back, and when you're dancing, they will go, yeah, yeah, that's Akishka. Let's say that, Akishka. Akishka is throwing your voice in happiness and in gladness. And believe me, it feels good when you sing and aggravate your own heart. Because if you don't aggravate your own heart, guess what's going to happen? Somebody's going to aggravate it for you. <laughs> yes. Let's sing and, and uh, welcome the morning and say good night in the evening with a song. In the old days, we used to do that. Those old timer birds are probably out there saying, you know what, there's some true ladies that used to sing. <laughs> And they used to sing in the evening, I don't know what they were. So that's us. We're supposed to be welcoming the morning and have a song of gratitude in the evening. I'm probably one of the ones who still does that. I, every opportunity I get, I sing a gratitude song. And believe me, it really helps me to be grateful for a lot of the things that I have. World War II. Ia shita kuwa nichi ape. Ia shita kuwa nichi ape. Ia shita kuwa nichi ape. And I rode in one of those airplanes. 
those old timer ones. C47, uh, those old timer, uh, I think it's equivalent to a DC7, where they hit the air pockets and go <laughs> Yeah, I was a firefighter when I was a young, young man, and they used to take us in jets to the fire site, and then on the way back, they send us back in these little prop jobs. If you see a little gully down there, try to look at the bounce. <laughs> so as you look at dance, you wouldn't look like the bounce. Uh, but my uncle was, well, many of my uncles were in World War II. And uh, my uncle Dave, I always asked him questions about the war. And I never went to war myself. My fathers and my uncles, some of them were career. But so, something's happened to me. And, uh, I think they call it generation skip or something like that. Uh, but I didn't go to war. Uh, I passed everything and I just didn't uh, go. I was shot stateside before I even went and I got shot in Pine Ridge in the back. So that put me in the hospital for a while. And so I never did uh, go to the military. But I seen for my fathers and my uncles and I asked them questions all the time. After Vietnam, my cousins, I talk to them all the time about their experience. So I preserved a lot of these songs in their honor. I asked my uncle, uncle, you, you were so brave. I mean, how do you, do you run right towards the enemy? And he says, sometimes we have to, nephew. And I said, I mean, where'd you get your courage to, <laughs> to be doing that? And he probably got tired of me because I was a little boy and always asking questions. He said they gave us bear meat. And so once we were going to the Crow Nation to a powwow, and on the way there, close to Lodge Grass, Montana, I said, Grandma, she said, Doctor, I said, could you get some bear meat? Because I wanted to be brave. <laughs> uh, be brave, as my uncle said. Uh, so I always. Uh, maybe they were teasing me, but I didn't know it at the time. I thought they were telling the truth. But some of them came back on airplanes. And so some, one of our songs says they're coming back from the skies. They're flying home from the skies. And the song goes like, goes like this. Vietnam and the Lakota boys went there to stand 
in front of the advancing war. And that's all that says, understanding and uh, defending the lands there at that experience. We also have now uh, used one of the Korea songs to put the word Iraq in there for the new experience. So some of the melodies are the same. Some of the melodies of the old songs are the same. And I think I'll stop there. <laughs>